Hello there and welcome. This is Point of View. I'm Mark Leishman and this week the subject is tourism and the effect the downturn in what once was New Zealand's jewel in the crown of tourism could be having a, also a negative impact on agriculture. So my guest is Robert Reddix who's a senior lecturer in supply chain management at Lincoln University. So Robert welcome to the program and uh, thanks so much for joining us and before we get into this uh, what I think will be a fascinating subject could you tell us a bit about your journey to becoming a lecturer at Lincoln? Hi Mark, so I moved to New Zealand four, four years ago and I started to work for Scion in Rotorua, uh, later for the MPI at the Economic and Desa Data Insights team and uh, this is my latest uh, job, senior lecturer at Lincoln University. However, I needed to prepare for that and I pursued my uh, PhD in uh, North Carolina State Universi University in supply chain management. And previously I worked 18 years in the industry, so I have not started an, an, as an academics. I have a, a, a good sight what's happening in the industry. You've been there, you've done that, you've started from the shop floor. Where did, uh, where did life begin for you? I'm originally from Hungary. And, uh, and uh, uh, during my career, I try, try to uh, improve my knowledge. So as I started to work in the first year of the, the, my first university, uh, until I was uh, 32, I, I was keep learning. And uh, yeah, so, I, I, and also I worked 14 countries before and I like that uh, lifestyle. It looks like that New Zealand is the best place to settle. Well, that's the sort of thing we like to hear. Canterbury's a pretty good spot, isn't it? Now, supply chain, it's been a huge, I guess, casualty in many senses uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic. And it's kind of intriguing, isn't it, how the tourism reset has impacted on agricultural exports? Yes, uh, so I have regular discussion with my friend, Anthony Bryan. He is a associate professor in tourism. And we realized that uh, the tourism reset program could have a flown on effect on uh, agri-fresh export. And nobody researched that before in New Zealand. And why, why is this? So 80% of air freighted uh, export is uh, leaving the country in passenger planes bellies. Now, when COVID hit the country and we stopped uh, accommodating uh, tourist flights or passenger flights, we had an issue. We couldn't uh, send out or export products in uh, passenger flights bellies. And this is when we started to think about that, how the tourism reset program will look like, because uh, the tourism reset program means more sustainable tourism, less tourists, less passengers, but uh, maybe higher value passengers. But we assumed that it could decrease the number of flights leaving the country every day. And it has impact on uh, airfare. It, it's incredible, isn't it, to think that, uh, that air freight has such an impact and agri-fish products are so important for New Zealand as well. It's not just margin or profit, but some of our Pacific par partners uh, cannot uh, get their supplies in time if you we do not have uh, those uh, flights. Mm -hmm. So the government decided to, to, to support uh, New Zealand uh, agri-fresh export and uh, subsidized direct uh, dedicated air cargo flights. So instead of passenger flights, most of the uh, most of the uh, agri-fresh product, uh, air freighted agri-fresh agri product left the country by a dedicated air cargo in 2020 and 2021. So, uh, I mean, what sort of figures are we talking about in, in terms of total agri-export value? So it, it's uh, surprisingly significant. It's uh, uh, $11 billion a year pre-COVID. Um, and uh, in the last uh, decade, it grew faster, the agri-fresh export, air freight agri-fresh export grew faster than general uh, agricultural uh, export. So it means that now it takes 16% of the total value of uh, agri-export uh, and only 1% of volume. So these are high value, low 
volume uh, products usually. Or another approach, somebody mentioned uh, uh, me that it could be still not so high value per kg, but also high margin product. And uh, when the freshness makes difference and uh, you want top dollar like uh, salmon or sea, seafood, uh, you consider uh, air freight instead of uh, uh, sea shipping. Yes, and I suppose, you know, the fresh fruit, uh, various other things like that are very, very important. As you say, they are premium products, aren't they? They need to get to market very quickly. And of course, putting them in the belly of a passenger jet's perfect. Yeah, in that way, uh, the exporter and passengers contribute to the cost of the flight. So both of them, and this is a great synergy or a symbiosis between tourism and agri-fresh export. So this is why you decided that this topic needed some research. What, uh, what are you hoping to gain from that? So we wanted to see, first of all, the, the potential effect, the flown on effect on, uh, on agri-fresh export. If we reduce the number of tourists, it sh should have an effect on agri-fresh export. Mm -hmm. And uh, accidentally, COVID-19 happened. So we, we got a showcase what's happening if uh, the number of uh, passenger uh, flights uh, are uh, dropping. And uh, I prepared some uh, data analysis for our discussion. And uh, if you want, I could talk about that. Yes. Okay, so uh, first of all, the number of passengers from 2010 to 2019 increased from 2.5 million a year to 4 million a year. It, it's a significant increase and it dropped to 1 million in 2020 because uh, tourists couldn't come. Almost parallel, the air freight export grew together with that uh, increase in uh, tourist numbers. Luckily, it has not dropped uh, so much in 2020 as uh, tourist numbers because the government subsidized the dedicated air cargo. So this is how this survived. Most of the uh, uh, air freight export uh, leave the country from Christchurch Airport, a little bit less from uh, Auckland Airport. Yeah, what happened, I guess, is that they, these planes were completely empty of passengers. So they were effectively freight, freight planes, weren't they? Just the, the, the passenger section completely empty, but the bottom of the plane full. Yes. Uh, what happened that uh, for a while, uh, almost uh, two months, uh, the export was uh, reduced. And uh, then the government introduced this uh, scheme the, 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 the subsidy for dedicated air freight, it started to pick up. So uh, during the entire year in 2020, we still have a, a drop in export, uh, but uh, not so big like in the passenger numbers, uh, uh, thankfully for the dedicated air cargo. But dedicated air cargo is not uh, forever. It's, uh, it does not look uh, sustainable. Uh, and I will tell you why later. I presume, so this is the big question, isn't it? Uh, you know, is it going to come back? Um, and as you say, the, the, the idea is to change, is it to change the type of tourist that comes to New Zealand? So that was the plan. and. The, uh, the, these were the signals, even uh, uh, from the previous government, the coalition government, that they plan to have a more uh, sustainable tourism. It was before uh, COVID-19. So they wanted to reduce uh, tourist numbers, especially in some areas like Milford Sound. It was unsustainable there. Uh, and I understood that, but also uh, our partners and we in Academy thought that maybe it means fewer uh, tourist numbers altogether and higher value tourists. Uh, I uh, don't know the, the tourism strategy. Actually, they, they are elaborating on the uh, tourism transition plan right now. So we don't know what, uh, what the exact plans are, but we wanted to warn everyone that tourism has a uh, flown on effects on other industries. So it's not just hospitality. Uh, wealthy tourists cannot uh, pay off, uh, uh, cannot, cannot uh, replace uh, backpackers entirely. Uh, and and the, also the value 
won't go to the same uh, entrepreneurs who already build their infrastructure there, they invested there. But this is only the hospitality service. It has impacts beyond that. And the government need, needs to consider all the impacts, not just the impact on uh, hospitality. Do you think, and I'm not sure this is in your area, but uh, that, that there's, there's a place for dedicated uh, uh, aircraft that just do freighting of the likes of seafood and some fresh fruits and, and flowers, uh, etc. Yes, I, I think we need to investigate at least the uh, opportunity of that, whether we uh, could do that uh, on, a, on a more cost-effective uh, way than doing with a passenger flight. Definitely the big uh, catch there that uh, passengers and exporters contribute to the air freight cost. But if you have a separated infrastructure, a dedicated air freight for uh, products, it can save you money since the warehouse is different, uh, the costume is different. So I, I think generally uh, products are more forgiving than passengers, <laughs> just <laughs> from my own experience. So you need a, a, a lower cost, uh, very efficient, productive infrastructure to do that. And also maybe we need uh, investors instead of uh, government uh, or local government uh, managed operated airports yes. maybe we need uh, some some investors but uh, now if the investor need to compete with the government uh, supported uh, schemes it could be very very uh, tough so it's not attractive i think but it's uh, for the future what i wanted to say we need to analyze the opportunity of cargo dedicated air freight infrastructure. Fantastic. Well, it's time for a break uh, now already. Uh, my guest is Rod Robert Ruddix, a senior lecturer in supply chain management at Lincoln University. And we'll be back with more from Robert right after this break. This is Point of View on Country TV. Welcome back, this is Point of View. Uh, I'm Mark Leishman and my guest Robert Radix, a Senior Lecturer in Supply Chain Management at Lincoln University. And uh, I tell you what, it's it's been a, a real question for supply chain authorities really, hasn't it? It's been the toughest of times, not only of course with air freight, Robert, but uh, of course the, the sea lanes have been uh, somewhat impacted uh, by COVID-19, the pandemic generally. Yes, and there are uh, news everywhere about the the disturbance uh, in, in, in the supply chain, the disruptions, like uh, uh, ships are queuing uh, to get to the port and download uh, uh, containers. We do not have enough uh, shipping containers. It's a, a, a worldwide shortage of shipping containers. Yeah, it's true. I think never before uh, the supply chain uh, management uh, knowledge never were appreciated so like uh, now <laughs> only, yeah. only doctors are appreciated even more <laughs> i imagine though it's quite exciting in a sense for someone with you know your topic as a lecturer in supply chain management this is uh, you know this is almost nirvana this is perfect isn't it a great uh, a great problem to try and solve and, and and what has the government i guess done to support the industry to try and solve it so uh, they decided to support dedicated uh, air cargo and uh, this uh, scheme cost uh, 374 million dollar a year uh, from uh, taxpayers uh, money and uh, if you we consider uh, the impact on agri fresh product export, export it's a good investment mm -hmm. so it it's uh, there is no doubt about that the, the issue is it's not sustainable. So uh, first of all, despite of this uh, subsidy, exporters uh, claim that airfare is going higher, was going higher. So still it's not there. Also Air New Zealand, one of the air freighter uh, companies uh, made a, a, a huge loss despite of this uh, uh, subsidy scheme. So it, it, it's not enough. On the other hand, uh, maybe it against free trade agreements. And uh, during uh, the COVID pandemic, I think all other countries and partners understand that. 
but it cannot go for it cannot go forever. What did other countries do in a similar situation? So I, I need to uh, highlight that uh, New Zealand is in a specific situation. We are uh, far <laughs> from everywhere, and also uh, we have a very significant agricultural export. None of the other uh, develop, uh, developed country has uh, uh, such a big weight of agriculture like New Zealand has. And uh, a part of that is perishable product, high value perishable product. So our sensitivity to this issue is higher than in case of Australia with a high uh, internal market or the US or Europe. And also they can transport uh, stuff in the US and Europe uh, uh, on road or trail. So they are not so uh, vulnerable. Uh, what I, I found uh, interesting that uh, larger countries have their uh, air cargo dedicated infrastructure. And it, uh, it sometimes it's entirely separated from, from the passenger flights. Uh, for instance, in the US, in Houston, they have uh, uh, separated uh, part of the airport and separated infrastructure for uh, uh, dedicated air cargo. Uh, this, is, this can be one solution. The other one is the initiative from uh, the in International Air uh, Transportation Association that they want to make the available uh, capacities transparent for all countries, what kind of cargo capacities uh, could be available. And still, we are a little bit off from all transportation routes, except New Zealand and other countries, but uh, this uh, can give a uh, hope as well. So uh, this is what we can do, keep an eye on the Tourism Reset program and keep analyzing uh, the opportunity for a separated uh, uh, dedicated air cargo infrastructure. And of course the other issue if this continues is that there's, the consumer comes into it and uh, the, the thought of carbon credits and air miles and all this, you know, people uh, in perhaps the Northern Hemisphere are saying, well, you know, all those planes are flying over and that's not good for the environment. So uh, that might be uh, a somewhat a negative uh, aspect to our great products from New Zealand. It's true. It's absolutely true. Uh, I think the key here is the sustainability of the entire supply chain. I think all great uh, fruit uh, producers uh, can give evidence on a, on a very productive, uh, low carbon emission uh, uh, production. And uh, if it makes sense uh, altogether from, from uh, the, the using the site, using fertilizer, using machinery, uh, uh, harvesting the, the fruit and sending abroad by a flight, it could be still uh, competitive purely from environmental perspective from other countries' uh, products. One of my favorite examples when I lived in the, in the EU that uh, EU countries paying subsidies for agricultural uh, producers, for farmers, for instance, producing tomato in the Netherlands. So now look at the environmental effect of that. They need to heat their uh, uh, glass houses uh, winter time. They need to add uh, ad additional stuff compared to Greece. But uh, they can make, or Italy, they could make a good tomato without any uh, subsidy, transport it and still be competitive. But the uh, subsidies kill that kind of competition. However, it would make sense to grow something uh, where it belongs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The other interesting thing is, I mean, what the, the future, we, no one knows what's going to happen uh, still at this point with the pandemic, but should uh, the tourists start coming back, which, uh, you know, they will eventually, let's hope anyway, um, we, do you see the whole system changing? That uh, what will the, the um, supply chain look like then? Will it be a lot different? Is there a solution in your eyes? So, so I think the, the, uh, there, there will be a transition period. Uh, first of all, the uh, Air New Zealand and other companies need to catch up 
with the demand from uh, tourists when the borders will be open. And there will be a rush. <laughs> I cannot see in the future, but uh, I, I also want to travel. And I think a lot of people want to travel. We postponed, uh, keep uh, postponing this, but now we want to travel. But after that, uh, I think... Uh, the government plans about uh, welfare uh, and fewer tourists maybe start to to work. And uh, I, I, I just want everyone, all decision makers to be aware of, uh, of, of, uh, of these impacts, at least give a chance to analyze all of these impacts before they make a decision. That is an example that uh, maybe Tourists need to pay a kind of uh, tax, sustainability tax, to to for their uh, flight or arriving New Zealand and contributing to the infrastructure what we use for wastewater management and roads, etc. It could happen, so, uh, but then what we will use this money for? It's a it's a it's a key question. So if we have fewer welfare tourists and we have an, a revenue stream. From, from the kind of uh, tax what they pay, what it needs to, uh, where, where we use that as a support. Definitely in hospitality service, maybe we need new uh, hotels in different locations, but also we need to support those who lose uh, uh, competitiveness due to the higher airfare. So, are you, I mean, I presume you're suggesting that the type of tourist coming will be more, uh, you know, high end, um, more uh, valuable, I suppose, in the sense where we have more money in their pockets, uh, rather than say what we have attracted uh, a lot of backpackers in the past. Yeah, uh, but backpackers uh, contribute uh, on uh, uh, different ways. Uh, sometimes they are picking through it if they have the right to work. They can support agriculture, and we are missing those uh, employees uh, right now. Um, and also, when you plan or you want to do kind of human engineering, what type of people you want to attract, it's very hard to to forecast the effect of your uh, measures. It's, it, you don't know. If you want uh, tourists to spend more and stay more, these are good intentions, but uh, it's, it's hard, and especially move uh, tourists away from natural beauty because you cannot provide that in another place. Milford Sand, you cannot build it to, in Rotorua or you cannot build it in uh, Northland. Also, you cannot uh, uh, provide the, the best fishing sites, what we have in Tauranga, in, uh, in, uh, in Christchurch. So it's different. Uh, so it's, 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 it's a risky business to, to try to change uh, uh, people and uh, the habits of uh, tourists or attract different uh, type of people. I, in the past, I, I was thinking about the back, backpackers a lot. And I, uh, these are uh, students or they just finished their university or they, they just finished their high school. They are coming here and have a, a lifetime experience. And maybe these people will come back later when they are wealthy. So it has an impact on everything. So, so for, finally, uh, Robert, uh, for, for the grower out there who grows his uh, beautiful uh, peonies or tulips or the fisherman with his wonderful seafood, what is the future, do you think? Uh, 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 should they be depressed or will there be an answer? Oh, they should not be uh, depressed at all because uh, these products are so large contributors to New Zealand economy. Uh, mm, nobody want to hurt the interest of these businesses. It, it just, uh, it, it, I would like to avoid mistakes. So it, <laughs> nobody wants deliberately hurt their interest. They, 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 they need to continue uh, their business uh, also increase and improve until it's sustainable. And do you think that sustainability is is what, uh, bringing in our own freight airline or for those products particularly? Is that, that's one answer, obviously. I don't know. Uh, carbon counting is a, is a, 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 a different uh, science. I uh, published some papers about that, how, and sometimes it's contraindicative. But if, if something is, uh, you can do on a lower cost or a, 
on a more productive manner, it immediately reduces your carbon emissions. So it's not just uh, some people think that uh, money and sustainability uh, are uh, like uh, negatively correlated. No, it's it's not true. First of all, uh, clients are uh, ready to pay, willing to pay more for sustainably uh, produced uh, product and it can improve uh, the value. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, cost saving, uh, usually emission saving as well. Robert, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, Robert Radix. And uh, well, fascinating job you've got and I'm sure it's going to get even more intriguing. Thanks, Thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Robert Reddick, Senior Lecturer in Supply Chain Management at Lincoln University in Canterbury. And we'll have another point of view at the same time next week. Look forward to your company then.